back in the until you say you're a woman. Dick and Bob take sides in Families of War at 10 to 6. Then the pressure's on in Big Break at 6.30. At 7, the sky's the limit in whatever you want. Followed by the National Lottery, we've got your number at 10 to 8. Saturday night on BBC One. Now on BBC One, over to Cardiff for live coverage of the results of Vote 99. A very good morning to you from uh, Cardiff and welcome to viewers in England, Scotland and Northern Ireland who've just joined us. We've been on air for well over two hours already. The results have just started to come in in this first Welsh general election as it's been called. We've just had a couple of results uh, at the moment and uh, they're being a little slow but we're going to have a bit of a flood I think in the next hour so it's a good time indeed to join us. This is where we stand at the moment. It's a rather simple graphic I've got to show you. Uh, it is this, um, that Labour have won two seats so far and those two seats are uh, Carfilly and Wrexham. We're talking there about Ron Davis, a very familiar figure, the former Secretary of State for Wales. He's comfortably won a seat in Carfilly. And Dr John Marrick, his, his colleague and MP, has won a seat in Wrexham. So that's, uh, that's where we stand at this moment in time. Now then, we will keep you, of course, fully informed with the picture uh, in Scotland where they've been counting and declaring overnight and uh, we're going to see what Donald Dewar is going to do now that he's poised to become first secretary of the new Scottish Parliament. All the latest from there for you and the fact of course that he's been given a good run for his money by the Scottish National Party who managed a last minute burst it seems. Uh, so that's the picture in Scotland, we'll keep you in touch with that. And, of course, we'll also be keeping you in touch with responses to the massive test of public opinion in England yesterday. 10,000 councillors elected overnight. A good night um, for the Lib Dems, they say. Um, Labour say they didn't have too bad a night. The Tories have been claiming quite a good night as well. We'll have the latest reaction to that. So, to take us through the big picture, um, I think we can probably have a word with uh, Peter Snow, uh, who's in the uh, special election studio. We'll go to him in a few moments' time. Before that, let me introduce you to my two guests next to me here, Glyn Mathias, the BBC's uh, political editor in Wales, and my Westminster colleague, Robin Oakley, the BBC's political editor. Glyn, just an overview, first of all, of the Welsh scene, if we can, before I pass on to Robin for the UK scene. Well, what's in question here is, will the Labour Party secure an overall majority in the National Assembly? It does look as if they will be the largest party, but it's a big question, will they fall short of the magic 31 seats they need to command a majority in the Assembly? From the results so far, Labour are beginning to pile up the seats they need, but the big story is that Plaid Cymru are doing much better than expected in areas where they've never done so well before. In Caerphilly, where Ron Davis came home, the former Welsh Secretary, as the Assembly candidate, uh, he was elected, but Plaid Cymru uh, uh, did exceedingly well, uh, securing a massive swing from Labour. If that's replicated in different, different areas, we could see Plaid Cymru securing one or two surprise results. Very interesting, Clint. Thanks a lot. Robin, um, UKY, the Scottish results and the English Council results, where have they left us? Well, what we're seeing in Scotland and Wales clearly is the emergence of the nationalist parties as the chief rivals to Labour. They have consolidated their position both in the Scottish Parliament and Welsh Assembly elections, are clearly going to have a strong core of uh, members in both those two bodies, uh, which should give them great opportunities for the future. The Conservatives being reduced to some extent to an English party, uh, certainly in terms of first preference uh, votes and achievements, but scoring well enough in the council elections overnight, I think, to remove the immediate crisis atmosphere that has been enfolding the Tories since they rather bungled a rebranding operation uh, trying to enliven their appeal. Uh, certainly, I think the immediate threat to William Hague has probably disappeared, and they're not going to want to exaggerate their divisions with the European Parliament elections uh, coming up in another month. Liberal Democrats, uh, quite a good night for them. Uh, they had the big score of winning Sheffield from Labour, 
and they are now clearly established, uh, despite some of the worries that their cooperation with the Labour government, constructive opposition as they call it, could weaken their appeal in local government, they're now very much established, I think, as a permanent force in local government, uh, and they are there to stay in terms of council seats and uh, who emerges as the second party in local government between the Liberal Democrats and the Tories I think is still up for grabs. Robin, Lynn, thanks very much for the time being. Uh, plenty of themes for us to discuss and uh, indeed it'll be useful at this stage I think to, to, to go over to Peter Snow and ask Peter for the big picture, what we might be expecting and for a roundup of what's happened so far. Over to you Peter. Well Hugh, here's the map of Wales now with uh, three results in and here we have uh, three Labour slabs on the map, the constituency seats in, but my goodness be in Clwyd South, a 17.5% swing there to Plaid Cymru from Labour. There's Wrexham and Caffili to a huge swing to Labour, uh, sorry, to Plaid Cymru from Labour. So we can expect some fairly dramatic results. Uh, no other results in yet, but we are beginning to get a picture now from uh, North Wales. There's that Clwyd South and Wrexham result in. Those are the two constituency seats in North Wales, but of course at the same time they're totting up the second votes that people cast in North Wales, so far they've only counted uh, this number here, only about a couple of constituencies, 19,000 for Labour, 9,000 the Conservatives, here's Clyde Cymru and seats not normally that healthy for them with 7,500 votes, Liberal Democrats 5,174 and the others on 1,700 odd down here. Now that is the share, that second vote is calculated as a share that then drives the allocation of the top up seats North Wales. And this is how it works. There you have the Labour Party on 45%, with two wins so far in the constituency seats. There's the Tories with uh, a fifth of the vote, Clyde Cymru with nearly a fifth of the vote, and the Liberal Democrats with about an eighth of the vote on 12% there. Now, the party list seats going down the bottom there, and you can see what's going to happen in North Wales, very roughly. You're going to get Labour uh, winning a few more seats in North Wales, perhaps the old top-up seat in North Wales, but the Conservatives, who probably won't take any constituency seats in North Wales, will win perhaps a couple of these. Uh, there's Rod Richards there in uh, Clwyd West. He'll probably win because he's top of the list there. He'll probably win a seat and maybe his colleague down here. And they will uh, do quite well there with a couple of seats there. Clyde Cymru will probably, of course, take their seats in Anishmon and Carnarvon. So maybe they won't be due for another top-up. Who knows? Uh, the Liberal Democrats here probably due for a top-up seat there. But it is striking how well Clyde Cymru are doing. And let's just have a look now at the share of the vote, the change in the share of the vote from the general election of 1997. This illustrates the point very well. You have lab the Labour vote dropping by 15%, from of course a massive vote in the, in the uh, general election. Here we go, 20% up for the Clyde Cymru of the Welsh National Party, a very, very big 17.5% swing overall so far in the results we've had, and the Tories down from a dreadful result uh, in the May, in the um, 1997 election, with the Liberal Democrats just up a tiny bit. Thank you. Peter, thanks very much indeed. Now, um, as we were listening to Peter there, we've had a few results coming in. Let me show you Monmouth, which has just come in a few moments ago. A very important result here. David Davis for the Tories has taken that with nearly 13,000 votes. This was a, a bit of a neck-and-neck -neck battle with Labour. Labour held the parliamentary seat since the last election, um, just on over 10,000 votes. There you see Liberal Democrats and Plaid uh, struggling a little. Let's just have a look at uh, what that means in terms of share. Just over 40% there for the Tories. Labour some eight points behind and Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru and uh, others uh, struggling a little and the change will tell us that Labour has down significantly which the result confirms for us the others um, mild swings in their favour um, and I want to show you as well the, the latest result I've got from um, from Cloyd South and um, and that shows us that Labour have uh, actually taken Cloyd South um, by 9,000 uh, votes and let's just have a look at Cloyd South if we can um, it's just coming up there we are and applied Cymru uh, on five and a half thousand, the Tories on four thousand, the Lib Dems on some two and a half thousand. If we go through the share there on Cloyd South, which we'll discuss in a few moments, Labour on over 40 percent, applied on 25 uh, percent of the vote there. That's uh, a big vote for them in this area. The Tories on 19 percent, and this is a seat, by the way, that they held at Westminster not so long ago. The, the change on 97, Labour down 16, applied Cymru um, up by 18.9 percent. So. Um, we're getting ready to go to Swansea as well, and as soon as that's ready, um, we can go to it. Um, so let's join Swansea now. We'll have some of the results bilingually.
or amgesid, and ar atholiad ichod fel a ganlin. So she's introduced the result. John Graham Ball, Clyde Cymru, the Party of Wales. Pimp Meal Scythe, in Pedwar. Peter Malcolm Black, Liberal Democrats, Wales, Democratiad, Reid Vadol Cymru, Tree Meal, Now Tree. 3,903. Valerie Ann Feld, Labour Party candidate, Am Gaisid Clavir, Now Meal, Pedwar Now Pimp. 9495. Which is a pretty good result for them. William Hughes, Ian, commonly known as Bill, Welsh Conservative Party candidate, Ian Meal, Chwech Chwech Tri. 1,663 for the Tory, a very low vote there. Valfeld, where the so Valfeld for um, Labour. Now then, let's, uh, let's leave Swansea there because I want to bring you um, a very important result which flashed across our screens a few seconds ago. Um, the eagle-eyed will have noticed it. Let's look at that. That's Isloin. This is Neil Kinnock's old stomping ground, a very strong Labour area. Plaid Cymru have actually taken Isloin. Now, that's a, a dramatic result, certainly. Glyn, what do you make of that? Well, this was, uh, up until uh, half an hour or so ago, very unexpected. Nobody ever expected Plaid Cymru to capture this solid Labour Valleys seat uh, in Isloin. But Brian Hancock... Uh, who is a uh, former chemical engineer. He's sneaked past uh, Labour's Shane Williams uh, to capture the seat. Uh, it's a huge swing uh, to Plaid Cymru. We've been seeing this kind of swing in other parts, particularly in Caerphilly, uh, but this has been enough uh, for uh, Plaid Cymru to take this seat. Well, as we a can major see, surprise. As we can see, then, with over 42% of the vote, and just to give you an idea of how that's changed, look at that. Labour down nearly 35% on the 97 result. Mm -hmm. There'll be people, of course, who'll question that comparison, but that's the comparison we're making. And Plaid Cymru up by 35.7%. It's, it's quite incredible. Glenn. Indeed, uh, Plaid Cymru have leapt from fourth place in the general election in 1997 to take the seat. They had merely 6.2% of the vote uh, in 1997, uh, and they now have this massive share of the vote uh, to take the seat. Uh, a major, major surprise. And this does throw into question whether or not Labour can secure an overall in the Assembly. Glyn, thanks a lot. Um, why don't we have a look now then at the state of the parties and see where we are at this uh, time so that we can have a quick look at uh, where we stand. The state of the parties, um, with a few results having come in, um, being as follows, if we can just have a look at it, and it's a bit slow coming up, so why don't I give our politicians a chance to have a word about those results that we've had and then we'll have a look at the state of the parties then. So we'll, we'll keep you in the suspense and over to Bet Sam Powers. Thanks, Hugh. Yes, from fourth to first in Isloin for Plaid Cymru. Elwyn Lloyd, I've got that smile finally. What's going on? <laughs> well, I'm highly delighted. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier on that uh, up until today, nobody ever thought we'd win this seat. In fact, Brian Hancock told me two months ago in a meeting in Isloin that he was going to win. And I must confess, I thought he might have been a little enthusiastic. He's worked very, very hard. He's very well regarded in the area. And I'm delighted for him and for Plaid Cymru in Islwyn. And, of course, it's going to mean great things, I think, uh, breaking into the Labour heartlands. Does it mean more seats, or is this the only seat we're going to see going over to Plaid? No, I think there'll be another two, possibly three, uh, well, in South Wales. Peter Hayne, where's your overall majority now, then? I think the overall majority is in question. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But uh, it's no, no question about it. It's a spectacular result for Plaid and a very disappointing one for us. The main message, which I've actually been preaching, as anybody who's followed these things knows, for the last year, is that Labour in Wales has been far too complacent, at local level especially, and indeed at national level, because we, for a generation, have seen our position rise remorselessly at the expense of an, the Tories because of an increasingly bitter anti-Tory feeling. Now, that didn't exist in this campaign. Indeed, the Tories have done dreadfully. Almost every one of these results has shown their percentage vote down, which means there's no way they can come back at the next general election. So, overall majority in question, but you're doing even worse, Nigel Evans. Well, en enough of Peter Hayne's spin, I think. We all know exactly Facts. what game Peter Hayne is Facts. playing. But 
the significant result as far as we're concerned, and the one with the highest turnout at 51% has been Monmouth. Is he shot up and, at that point? I well, I, 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 indeed, yes. Uh, but but my, my few hours, the voters in my few hours. Well, Nigel. Peter, the fact is that we have been criticised for having no national representation in Wales. Now with David Davis, I congratulate him greatly. We have our first uh, uh, win, our first gain there in Monmouth. You so Hugh to be Edwards, Hugh anymore. Edwards, <laughs> Hugh Edwards is now on the notice to quit as far as Monmouth is concerned at the next election. But what Peter fails to recognise time and time again is that these very low turnouts, what's happening is the Labour Party vote is dropping dramatically and the protest vote, yes, is going to Plaid Cymru, but Plaid Cymru are getting all their votes out. And if it was the same turnout as a general election, then Plaid Cymru's national percentage would be about 11 or 12 per cent. So it's not a remarkable the, the uh, Labour voters not, have not been staying at home, vote. I mean, the Labour voters have been staying at home. Even in Monmouth, the Tory vote is exactly the same percentage as in 1997. So there's no chance of them winning it at the next general election. Lembit Opik, you wanted devolution, you wanted PR, you've got both. The only thing you're lacking is seats at this well, point. Well, it, as ever, it takes the Liberal Democrats to give an honest assessment without any spin at all. <laughs> and as I look at the figures, we're up one. 0.4% in Isluin, up 2% uh, Cluid South, 3% uh, Wrexham, 4% Caerphilly, and up 5% in Monmouth in a situation which was clearly a squeeze. That means that on the first past the post constituency vote, we are outperforming what we did in 1997 in the general election. At this point, I'm pretty pleased about it. I'm frankly relieved about it because at the end of the day, I'd have had to explain to the party why we weren't going up in the polls because I was directing the campaign. Fine. Well, thank you. Back to you, Hugh. And I may I just note that it wasn't you who was being given a notice to quit there. It was another Hugh Edwards. <laughs> I was worried for a bit. I do get that MP's post sometimes when I used to work at Westminster, which is slightly worrying. But um, rest assured, I've uh, no ambitions in that direction. Um, now, I promised you the, um, the state of the party. So let's have a look at it. As we stand, a few results in. They're coming in a little more quickly now. Labour on five seats. The Tories on one, which is the Monmouth seat I want to talk about in a moment. Plaid Cymru on one. That's the Eastloin seat. Those are figures at the bottom. I will talk to you in a little more detail about later on. But it's all to do with the, the nature of the votes. The first being, of course, on the constituency ballots and the second on the list. That's, uh, it's not quite as complicated as it sounds. Now, um, Aberavon, which I want to show you, which is coming up next. This is a, this is a result we've just come in. Um, it's um, it's Labour basically taking it very simply on a, on a majority of nearly 7,000, a vote of nearly 12,000. Plaid Cymru on 5,000, the rest... Um, uh, obviously way behind and that's uh, a share of the vote for you of over 50% in Aberavon. This seat is held in Parliament by John Morris who's the Attorney General and it's been a Labour seat for as long as anyone can remember but that's a very big Plaid Cymru vote in Aberavon indeed and I think the next graphic will show that. It's up by 17% on 97 and Labour's share down by 20%. The next one I want to show you is Swansea East. Um, Labour have, having taken Swansea East on 9,500, again Plaid Cymru in second place, nearly 6,000 votes, a majority of nearly 4,000, a very, very low turnout and we're seeing some exceptionally low turnouts in this Welsh vote. There are exceptions to that but this is a very poor turnout indeed of 36%. Uh, uh, easy share of the vote for Labour there. Plaid Cymru, 27% in Swansea East, I can tell you, is very high for Plaid Cymru, 19% for the Lib Dems, and uh, again, there you see it. 30% down on Labour's share, 25% um, up Plaid Cymru share, and Lib Dems up by um, 10%. So, Glyn, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a whole host of results, but we skipped over Monmouth earlier on, which is a very significant result indeed. Why? Well, you have to remember that the last general election, the Conservatives were wiped out in Wales. They didn't win a single Westminster constituency seat. So we've been waiting to see whether they can recapture one uh, in these assembly elections. And they have. They've captured Monmouth. Uh, and David Davis, uh, who's a self-employed businessman, has captured it with a majority of a couple of thousand. But what's interesting, natural Conservative territory, you might say, Monmouth, uh, and they should win this kind of seat. But an opinion poll only a few days ago suggested that they wouldn't. So some gratification, I think think for David Davis. What's interesting is that the Conservatives have more or less held the same share of the vote that they had back in 1997 and it's the Labour vote which has drained away to other parties primarily Plaid Cymru. Okay Glyn, um, if we're in luck I think we can uh, talk to the Deputy Prime Minister himself, um, John Prescott who's in our Westminster studio. Um, Mr Prescott, good morning to you. Yes, you're in luck you. I'm certainly in luck and I'm very pleased that you're there. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I know it's a, it's a, it's a frustrating oh, game. How do you feel? As a Welshman listening to those results. Absolutely. How do you feel this morning? I feel very good. The results have been good for us in our council elections, and I'm delighted about that, having played a large part in the campaigning. Um, 
Can I get rid of some of the negative points first? You'd expect me to. The turnout in Wales, certainly in parts, has been very, very disappointing indeed. Um, th that must bother you. Well, all turnouts concern politicians, of course, and uh, in the council elections, uh, the 47% share of the vote we had last time was really peak for us four years ago. Um, but this is now, in our case, some kind of politics of contentment, really, isn't it? That we're finding lots of people feeling we don't need to turn out, we're satisfied with the government, and um, therefore it's had its effect. Um, but it well, still is the best result for 100 years that any government has had two years into its office. No, no, I, I take that point. I'm just, I'm just wondering that, um, you know, uh, are we looking at a, a position in which people think that local government doesn't matter in some way anymore? And it's no, there's no point turning out to vote for it. It's been shown of so many powers over the last 20 years that uh, they really don't see much point in turning out for local government elections anymore. No, I don't think that's the case. My experience and we're now making major changes in local authorities to give more people influence in that decision making and major bills before parliament at the moment but it almost was concerned uh, democrats about what the level of turnout we must seek to actually improve that and indeed that's what we're doing and a number of voting changes that are taking place as you see in wales and london doesn't necessarily guarantee you get a high turnout uh, but at least we must all keep working at it um, it looks as if in Scotland uh, Labour will need to be in coalition probably with the Liberal Democrats in order to govern comfortably and it looks as at, at the moment at least Mr Prescott that uh, Labour are going to be hard pressed to get a, a, a clear majority in the Welsh Assembly too. Um, uh, that must be a disappointment. I know there's a lot of talk about inclusive politics but surely what Labour wants to do is to govern by itself. Well, I heard Peter Hayne there make clear that he did think we were going to get the majority. Well, we'll we must see. wait to see the result. But in Scotland, of course, we haven't got an overall majority. But uh, what we've made clear with the new voting system, it's a new start. We've uh, decentralised power in the most radical way, both to Scotland and to Wales. And it's now up to the people of Scotland, in this case, to make their decisions and to do it with the politicians they've elected. It's called devolution, it's called democracy, and I'm proud to have belonged to a government that's brought it about. So does devolution and democracy also involve sort of forcing a leader on the Welsh Labour Party, which uh, lots of them didn't want? Alan Michael, I'm talking about, of course. Well, we went through the proper processes of election. You've had a lot of discussions about that in Wales, and uh, now it's the time for the people's voice, and it's their sovereign in these matters, and we must wait and see what they now have to say. If Labour's vote is less than you would have wished in Wales, would you uh, entertain the possibility that that leadership election and the way it happened perhaps didn't help your cause? No, we've gone through the uh, proper processes of these matters they're often controversial we have now passed on to the election the election will be over after today we'll have the politicians that the people in Wales have decided will now run the country with the, uh, their leaders and they will work on the programs they've put to the people of Wales that's for the people of Wales to make that decision um, a, a quick point to, to end on mr. Prescott looking ahead to the European elections and the question of turnout because European elections uh, haven't excited people in the past at least uh, not in recent years um, what can you as politicians do to try to increase awareness and to, to encourage people to go out to vote in what they consider often are, are remote bodies which have little relevance for them well, I think uh, our job is, of course, is to try and get over the message now in government rather than opposition as to what we're doing and how important Europe is in that context. I know in the matters of environment, it's been absolutely crucial. In the matters of clearing up the mess of the BSE, in fact, we've had to work and get more advanced and develop policies with Europe, and we've been successful in that. And all we can do is tell the electorate of what we're doing and hopefully convince them of the right to take part in that election. That will be on June the 10th, and we should remind ourselves it doesn't end today. We still have to vote in the Euro elections on June the 10th. Uh, Mr Prescott, it's good talking to you as usual. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. Thanks a lot. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's update and give us a bit of context as well. I'll give you some more results um, when they come in. I can just show you Pont Pont-de-Priv, actually, which is, a, which is a party uh, list result, which is a regional vote there. Now, this looks uh, rather complicated, um, which is why I'm going to ask Glyn Mathias immediately to cast his expert eye over it and tell us, Glyn, what are we looking at here with this long list of figures? Well, we have to remember that this is the second vote, the vote for the top-up seats in the regions, uh, and so it does not directly elect a single uh, assembly member. Uh, but as an indication uh, of how it's going, uh, it's quite useful. Uh, as we can see, uh, Labour uh, still on top there uh, of Plaid Cymru. But look where Plaid Cymru has come from, uh, from a mere 6% of the vote in the 1997 general election uh, to uh, a much, much bigger vote, a huge swing there to Plaid Cymru uh, on that vote. Not a direct comparison, not a fair comparison, no. uh, just as general indication of the way things are going. Okay, Glenn, thanks very much indeed. Um, 
Uh, we're talking about context and the fact that Plaid Cymru obviously are doing well. Um, Peter Snow has some illustrations for us of the, uh, the wider Plaid Cymru context so that you can understand what the particular patterns are here. So let's go to Peter Snow now. Quite extraordinary patterns of colour arising now in South Wales. Uh, Hugh, we haven't seen like, anything like this for a long time. This was a great sea of red all along here, but already with only five results in South Wales in, we've got the Tories taking Monmouth, Clyde Cymru amazingly taking his loo in there, and swings in Swansea east of 27%. Extraordinary things happening. It's a combination of the very low 43% turnout, keeping Labour people away differentially, uh, and also, of course, Clyde Cymru's really sweeping successes. You just have a look uh, now at the share of the vote over the past 40 years or so, just to give you an idea where Plaid Cymru have come from. There we are back in 1966. Look at Labour up there on 61%, totally dominating Wales. The Tories hardly anywhere, and Plaid Cymru almost invisible at the bottom here with 4%, and the Liberal Democrats with 6%. Now, what happened since then? 1970, the Labour Party beginning to decline. Plaid Cymru is suddenly appearing at 11.5%, and the Liberal Democrats down at the bottom, the Tories staying even there. 1983, Margaret Thatcher's high watermark, Labour and the Tories fighting it out together up here on 38%, Liberal Democrats doing okay on 23%, Plaid Cymru still right down the bottom there at 8%, and then suddenly here at the European elections in 1994, Plaid Cymru is scoring their best ever so far as 17%, the Tories collapsing and Labour totally dominating again. And now we have at the moment, uh, well, this is the 1997 general election here with Plaid Cymru going down again, Labour dominating, but here we have now Labour down at 43%, right down here at 43%. Plaid Cymru's 24% is 7% above its previous record. They're doing astonishingly well. And what is really happening is that Plaid Cymru are hitting those big Labour majorities. The problem for Plaid Cymru is that Labour are so well placed, their strongholds are so heavy with votes, it's going to be very difficult for them to take constituency seats off Labour. And they've done it in his Lewin, but they're going to find it very difficult to take constituency seats off Labour. But wait for lots of surprises. Quite an extraordinary situation. Back to you, Hugh. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Peter. Now then, I just want to give you a look at the state of the parties as we stand at the moment. There it is. Um, Labour on six and uh, the Conservatives on one and Plaid Cymru on one. And I just want to give you a few results as well. Um, Neath. Now, that's uh, Gwenda Thomas for Labour. Uh, this is Peter Haynes' stomping ground, of course. Um, and Gwenda Thomas, uh, his colleague, has won Neath with a majority of just over 2,500. A strong vote again for Plaid Cymru there of 9,600. Um, a relatively decent 48% turnout in the context of this uh, Welsh Assembly elections, but uh, not great, I must say. And uh, in terms of share, 46% to 36%, the contenders there, Labour and Plaid Cymru. Uh, a very big swing, I think, we'll find to Plaid Cymru. They're up by 28% on Peter Haynes' vote in this seat, which is the comparison we're making um, in 97. Uh, Labour down by the full 28%. Let me zip through a few others for you quickly. Blyna Gwent, this is Michael Foote's old stomping ground. This is a list vote here. Um, we're looking at, uh, again, Labour topping the list and Plaid Cymru taking 25%, which, again, for them in this kind of area, is a big change on what we've seen in the past because, as you can see, um, they've taken 24% of the vote and Labour on just over half of all the votes cast. And uh, Merthyr Tydfil as well, the regional vote there. Labour on the top, no surprise. But Plaid Cymru giving them a good chase. And as we can see in terms of uh, the uh, change on 97 in Merthyr Tydfil, a very strong Labour seat in Parliament. Um, Labour down by 32% on Ted Rowlands' vote uh, last time round. And Plaid Cymru up by 28%. All confirming, Glyn, this trend, and in lots of areas that we hadn't expected, perhaps, um, that uh, David Wigley's party, Plaid Cymru, are giving Labour a very hard run for their money in some of these areas. Indeed, it does appear that after years and years of trying, uh, Plaid Cymru are beginning to break out of uh, their Welsh-speaking heartlands in North and West Wales and are racking up some huge votes in the traditionally solid Labour valleys. I think this is partly uh, the old Labour vote not turning out for Labour or perhaps registering a protest, partly because they don't like New Labour and haven't uh, ever since uh, uh, the uh, uh, Labour was yeah. elected two years ago, partly because they're not that interested in the Assembly. They didn't bother to turn out to vote. But nevertheless, a, a significant trend here. And what is happening is, whereas across Wales as a whole, uh, the Plaid, Cym Plaid Cymru are registering somewhere around 25 26%. Here and there, they're registering 34 35%. And that, now and again, may be enough to sneak the odd seat like Isloin. Uh, let's have a look at this result that's just came in Cardiff Central, which is the seat where we're expecting the Lib Dems perhaps to do very well on the first-past-the-post vote, 
Well, this is the regional vote in the same area. And look, the Lib Dems are at the top there again, which is again significant. We can't draw direct parallels, but this would seem to indicate that the Liberal Democrats will capture this seat uh, in the first past the post element uh, of uh, the election. And, and the Liberal Democrats, Jenny Randerson, will find herself in the Assembly representing Cardiff Central. They have been knocking on the door here for some time over the last decade or so. Uh, but clearly, uh, against the trend in other parts of even Cardiff, the Liberal Democrats appear to have done very well in this particular seat. Robin, um, we're expecting one or two results, some declarations which we can join quite soon. Um, a few brief points from you at this stage. Well, certainly backing up what Glynn has to say there, Labour's poor turnout in a number of areas. Uh, apathy, the national opinion poll standing of Labour, they were always worried people would feel the Labour faithful, they didn't have to turn out. Some disappointment among the Labour core vote that it's all too much jam tomorrow in terms of the national minimum wage, the working families tax credit, not looking after our people as Thatcher used to look after hers is, is the way it's put. I think they've been turned off too, some of the Labour faithful by Labour leadership wrangling, the parachuting in of, of Alan Michael, and of course, as Glyn mentioned, the lack of belief in the new assembly. But I think the key factor is we've forgotten for a moment about what a historic night May the 6th 1999 actually was. Politics is not going to be the same in this country. Uh, what we see now both in the Welsh Assembly and the Scottish Parliament is the nationalist parties emerging as the main parties of opposition at this stage to rival Labour. They're going to have cause of MPs or members of those assemblies and parliaments who will enable them to be judged by the public, perhaps seen in a new light for the future. And we're also starting to talk, at least in the Scottish context, about coalition politics. That means deals on particular issues of policy, like tuition fees, for example. That's going to lead to tensions within the Labour cabinet. John Prescott was on very good form there, but he's already said he's no great oh, fan of Lib Labbery. Uh, and uh, although okay. he was tactful there, he's going to be fighting that all the way. Gordon Brown, the Chancellor, isn't going to want to see too much wheeling and dealing in Scotland between the Labour um, First Secretary, Donald Dewar, and the Liberal Democrats, because it's going to cost him money on his budget. Oh, Plenty to talk about, certainly. Uh, th Robin, thanks a lot. Um, let me just show you the pictures in uh, Carnarvon. Um, if we can, in Newport, I beg your pardon. We're going to, a, I think we're going to a declaration in Newport. So um, I think, as you can see on our big video screen there, uh, Newport is getting ready to declare Newport East and West. So let's join the Newport count. This is the result of the Newport East constituency for the National Assembly for Wales. I, Lawrence Nippers, being the returning officer at the election of a member for the Newport East constituency held on Thursday the 6th of May 1999 do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Alistair Ronald Cameron, Liberal Democrats Wales, 2,684. John Griffiths, the Labour Party candidate, 9,000. 497. Christopher Holland, Plaid Cymru, 2,647. And Mark Major, the Conservative Party candidate, 4,386. And I do hereby declare that the said John Griffiths is duly elected a member for the said constituency. Thank so you. That's, uh... That's a comfortable win there for Labour's John Griffiths in the constituency of Newport East, which is a Labour stronghold, and uh, it's uh, certainly been in Labour's hands for many, many years. And uh, Mr Griffiths, obviously, is uh, being uh, congratulated by, uh, by his um, con fellow contenders there. Right. So let's just Thank have a quick much. few words from him. Uh, firstly, I'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to the people of Newport East for once again supporting the Labour Party and its principles and policies. I would like to thank the returning officer and his staff for all their hard work. I would like to thank party members and supporters for all their efforts, including my agent, Steve Down, and my, hopefully my fellow Labour Assembly member, Rosemary Butler, for Newport West, for our joint campaign. Also, thanks to the other candidates for the way the campaign was conducted. OK, so uh, this is uh, John Griffiths, who's the, uh, the winner in Newport East. He's now a Labour member of the um, National Assembly. And uh, let's just have a look at those figures just to uh, 
to make sure that we understand exactly what went on at that uh, at that count. So let's have a look at Newport East. There's John Griffiths' vote, nearly 9,500, um, and he's uh, over 5,000 ahead of the Conservative Mark Major. Look at that turnout, another paltry 36%, which uh, is uh, rather sad if you are a believer in a big turnout in the democratic process. So that's, uh, that's a little sad. But anyway, let's look at the share. There's Labour with nearly half of all the votes cast, uh, Conservatives on 22.8%. Let's come out of this result and go over to Carnarvon, where there's the declaration. May I thank all the counting assistants for their work this morning? I should say that Carnarvon is uh, the uh, headquarters of David Wigley, primarily, who is the president of Plaid Cymru. And we're going to have a look at uh, this result now. The introductions are being made, so let's listen. And uh, as you'd expect, certainly in this part of Wales, where there's a majority, a, a big majority of uh, Welsh speakers in this community, there will be a fully bilingual version of these results. So um, I think um, we're just expecting uh, the result to come now. Well, well, let's hope it's coming very quickly. I think we're just calling the candidates up, actually, which is a rather laborious process, it seems. But uh, um, we can see there um, that they're gathering rather slowly, I think. Um, yes, they're being called up one by one. And the Green Party candidate is now being called up. We're waiting here because it is a party leader's seat, David Wigley of Plaid Cymru. And uh, with any luck, we'll get the result um, quite soon. Well, um, far be it for me to lose patience, but I think this is a, it's a bit of a pause, isn't it? Yes, the result's coming now. Well, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Yes, he is actually giving us the result at last. Assembly for Wales. Now saying the Carnarvon constituency. The North Wales regional ballot for the Carnarvon constituency. Rivi, a Swedish Kalaniata, a Gavar, a Tholaith Carnarvon. The election officer, he's saying. And that's gone. Um, I'm announcing that the number of votes is as follows. Here comes the result. 87. Conservative Party, a Blaid Gaidwatol, Duivil now can't Pimdega Guith, 2958. Green Party, Plaid Werd, Pim Cant Chwedega Dai, 562. The Labour Party, Plaid Lavir, Chwe Mil Chwe Cant Pedwardega Guith, 6,648. Liberal Democrats Wales, Democratia Rhyfrydol Cymru, Mil Dai Cant Pridega Saith, 1,237. Uh, natural Law Party of Wales, Cant of Hedwar, 104. Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, Ian Vilar Bymthag, Chwe Chant a Ginor Ddeg, 16,611. Clear leader of Plaid Cymru. Get protest campaign, Ian Ddeg now, 19. United Socialists, so shall we in Edig, Cant a Gwyth, 108. No, that, that is the list result, as I understand it. So I think we may get the constituency result, which involves David Wigley and the other candidates on first past the post um, after this one. But Glyn, on that list, on that list result, which um, which which he's just gone through there, um, a very big lead there for Plaid Cymru. If my sums are right, Glyn, of some ten ten thousand ahead of Labour. Indeed, uh, and uh, that clearly indicates that uh, David Wigley will increase his majority uh, when it comes to the declaration uh, of the constituency vote uh, very shortly. Uh, a majority obviously well above the 8,000 uh, which he secured back in 1997. Um, that's, uh, that's obviously um, significant in terms of what we're going to see coming up. Now let's go back to Carnarvon now. This is the constituency result. So he's now calling up the candidates in the first past the post. You can see David Wigley there, the president of Plaid Cymru, taking his place. He's just walking there to the back and uh, 
standing just there to the right of the uh, returning officer as, we, uh, as we're looking on. And this constituency result is now upon us. Cynulliad Cenedlaethol Cymru. National Assembly. Cynulliad Drosithfolaeth Cynarfon. Cynarfon Constituency. National Assembly for Wales, election for the Cynarfon Constituency. Yr wyf i Geraint R. Jones y swyddo canlyniadau drosetholaeth Cynarfon. Trwy hyn, yr oedd hybydd mae nifer y pridleisiau a roedd wedi bob gymgeisydd yn yr atholiad oedd fel a ganlyn, a'i Geraint R. Jones being the returning officer for the Cynarfon constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Tom Jones, Labour Party candidate, ymgeisydd Lladr, 6,475. Six thousand four hundred and seventy five. Bronwen Nash, Welsh Conservative Party, Plaid Gidwatol Cymru, Duivil, Petwar Cant, Chwedega Fetwar, two thousand four hundred and sixty four. David Peter Shankland, Democratia Hivretol Cymru, Liberal Democrats Wales, Saith Gant, Naudega Gian, seven hundred and ninety one. David Wickley, Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, Dynau Meal, Saith Gant. <laughs> well, no surprise there. Very big win for Plaid Cymru as President David Wigley, um, with a majority of at least 12,000, I think, over the Labour Party candidate there. Um, much as expected, Lynn. Oh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, the performance on the first uh, vote was actually rather better than the performance uh, on the second vote. I think all our predictions about tactical voting between the first and second votes have gone slightly astray. Uh, in this case, uh, David Wigley vastly improving on his performance back in 1997, uh, where he had been pressured a little by the Labour Party in the 97 uh, election, uh, vastly improved his majority. Uh, this must be one of the safest seats in Wales now. OK, Glenn. Um, Mr Wigley obviously will say a few words. We heard from him earlier on um, anyway, and um, I just think I want to bring you up to date with some of the results we're getting. Blaenau Gwent. I want to show you Blaenau Gwent, which is Michael Foote's old seat. Um, Labour taking that, and Plaid Cymru again on a relatively strong performance from there. Turnout of 48%. And if we just look at the share, uh, Labour with a hefty 62%. Plaid Cymru on a surprising 21% in this area, which is a 16% change for them from last time. And look at this result from the Vale of Cloyd, which is a significant result. Um, Anne Jones uh, there in the Vale of Cloyd has taken that for Labour with... Um, Robert Salisbury of the Tories in second place, and that's on a turnout of 43%. So, Plaid there not doing so well. Uh, Sean Brannach um, polling just over 4,000 there. And uh, if we look at um, the Vale of Cloyd, uh, Labour is on 38%, and the Tories on 23%. Plaid on 19%. And uh, the change of the um, the change on 97, as we can see, is 15% down on. Labour. If we just have a quick look now at the state of the parties after the results we have, um, Labour on nine, the Tories still on one, that's the Monmouth seat, Plaid Cymru uh, on one, and things are changing, obviously, that needs to be updated, obviously. Let's join David Wigley in Carnarvon, the President of Plaid Cymru, for um, his remarks, and let's see what he's got to say now. He's, uh, he's just, uh, he'll make a few remarks in English, he's just saying that he's grateful to all of those who've uh, supported him. He also wants to... Um, Given dear Iritholiad, the mayor, said about Petristoch, said about a Hagvlin, Hui, Blauian. He's now talking about some of the electoral history of the seat. So, um, with due respect to Mr. Wigley, um, I think we'll leave that because um, he gave us his uh, enthusiastic words a few moments ago when we spoke to him. Let's go straight to another declaration at Cardiff West. Uh, this only plays a part for. Uh, the regional count which is to take place later on. So this is the list result. Of Cardiff West. A constituency of result, I beg your pardon. Each party was as follows. Communist Party 69, Conservative and Unionist Party 4000, Green Party 726, Liberal Democrats Wales 2850, Natural Law Party of Wales 72, Plaid Cymru the party of 4,838, Socialist Labour Party 335, the Labour Party 9,997, United Socialists 92, Alan John Mathias 153, Paul Gregory Phillips 14. 
I now propose to announce the election for the constituency of right. Cardiff West. So, without wishing to be smug, I it was the list, as I suspected, first of all, and it's now the, the constituency result. The 6th of May 1999 do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Avoy v. Stephanie King Davis, Serv Detroit Soidog, Kunlanyadai, and Etholyad, and Gunhaliad and Chwechev Mai, Mil Now Now Now, and Huspas e Druihin, Vord Niver. She's uh, basically just giving us the introduction to the result again. It's the normal form of words in Welsh, for the result was as follows. Or am Geiswir, and Ur of Etholyad. Ichoth Vel and Ganlin. Okay. Yes. Maya Ann Bolt, the Welsh Conservative Party candidate, 3,446. Eleanor Mary Bush, Clyde Cymru, the Party of Wales, 3,402. Dowie Howell Garrow Smith, Liberal Democrat, 2,063. Howell Rodri Morgan, the Labour Party candidate, 14,305. Well, a very big win there for Rodri Morgan, of course, who was a contender for the Labour leadership in Wales and who was beaten first time round by Ron Davis and second time round by Alan Michael. He's safely in the Welsh Assembly as the member and for I Cardiff West. I declare that the said Howell Rodri Morgan has been duly elected. So she's uh, now confirming that Roger Morgan, as if we didn't know already, has been duly elected. And um, we may get a few words from Roger Morgan quite soon. So why don't we just wait and see what uh, Mr Morgan has to say, given his prominence in this campaign and his prominence in uh, the Labour leadership election in Wales. And let's listen to him now. He's just uh, God him thanking the dear. population of Thank God's West. Thank you very West. much to all of you that have taken part in this historic first ever National Assembly for Wales election in the constituency of Cardiff West. And above all, a massive thank you to the electors of Cardiff West for the huge vote of confidence in me to be their first ever member of that Welsh Assembly. I, I want to say as well to uh, Dewi, Elined and Meyer, um, in saying their names and my own name, uh, it's Dewi, Elined, Meyer and Rodri. This almost sounds like a gathering in a Welsh nursery, I suppose, isn't it? But um, uh, they have all fought a fair and clean election and it's always better to take part in an election like that. I believe I have as well and I think that this election has brought credit to everybody that has taken part in it in Cardiff West. It's a historic day for us all in Wales because as of today, once we know the final results later this afternoon, it's a truism but I'll repeat it anyway, that politics in Wales will never be the same again. Not only because we will have our own assembly to make all those decisions on the domestic agenda that have been devolved to the Welsh Assembly, but also because it has brought in proportional representation for the first time in Welsh politics. And I know that that has been difficult for a lot of electors. It's been off-putting. And I know it created a lot of extra work of explanation to all of the poll clerks yesterday. And if any of those poll clerks are present today, if their eyes are still open, then I want to thank them for the efforts they went to to explain proportional representation and, the, and having the right to have two separate votes in the Welsh Assembly, once in the constituency and once for the party on the list. It was well, difficult uh, Roger for Morgan is telling us about the complexity of the system. Um, Roger, we don't need to be told about the complexity of the system because it's testing us all and certainly has probably tested quite a few voters too. Now, um, let's have a look at uh, Roger Morgan's result there in Cardiff West in a little more detail. Um, as we see a thumping win for him on a turnout of 47%, which is much better than in some parts of Wales, um, he's 
won a majority of over 8,000 there over the Liberal Democrat in this case. And uh, if we just look at the share, he took over half of all those votes cast yesterday, um, the Lib Dems um, taking 22% um, and uh, the Tories um, and Plaid Cymru in third and fourth. The change on Rodri Morgan's own Westminster performance in 97 is that he is down um, a fraction, about 7.6% on his his result then, the Lib Dems up substantially, as they seem to be in Cardiff Central as well, doing very well in the Welsh capital. The Tories suffering a little and Plaid Cymru up a little. Now, just a quick look for you at the state of the parties at this stage, now that Rodri Morgan is safely in. Labour on 10 as we speak, Plaid Cymru on 2, the Tories on 1. We're looking for Labour to get at least 31 seats if they're to have a majority of any sort in the Assembly. That's the target we're looking at. An overall turnout, as you can see, of 45% which is uh, a little less than the turnout in the referendum um, some 20 months ago. So it's uh, not exactly super impressive, but it's not quite as bad as uh, the 38% being suggested perhaps in some parts overall last night. So um, we take some crumb of comfort from that. Um, Glyn, at this stage, um, are we in a position to um, draw any kind of conclusions about how it's likely to go by the end of it? And crucially, Glyn, will Labour have a majority? I don't know is the answer. We have a long way to go before uh, we'll know the answer to that question. A mixed bag of results there, actually. Roger Morgan slightly bucking the trend uh, and uh, the swing to uh, Plaid Cymru not as great there. In fact, in Cardiff, it appears to be the Liberal Democrats uh, who are securing the anti-Labour vote uh, more than Plaid Cymru. We had the Vale of Cloyd up in North Wales on the North Wales coast a little earlier on. Plaid Cymru didn't do quite as well there as they have done in other parts of, of, of North Wales. So a mixed bag of results, really, dealt with Wigley, of course, increasing his ascendancy in his North Wales fastness of Carnarvon. OK, um, we should get some more results quite soon. Um, they're starting to trickle in and uh, uh, some of them actually rather more slow than we thought they would be. But uh, it's a chance for Betsan to put some of those results to our panel. So over to you, Betsan. Thanks. I was going to say, don't come to us, please, because we're furiously working up the mathematics as well. But here you are. So, Peter Hayne, at least Rodri Morgan is there. You might well need him. We've always needed Rodri. It's a fantastic <laughs> result for him. He'll be playing a big role in the Assembly, and I'm delighted for him personally. I think it's also important to say that again we see a collapse in the Tory vote. Now, this is very, very significant. Down from 20-odd percent in the 97 election, their worst performance for as long as anybody can remember in Wales, down again. Now, the message for them is they cannot get back for the next general election, despite the fact that our Labour voters are often staying at home in this election, with the exception of Rodri's vote. They are reasonably content, and the Tories are collapsing all over the place. Even so they've in the stayed seats... at home and left you in this position because they're reasonably content? Well, I think there's a lot of contentment amongst Labour supporters. I mean, there's some disaffection. The party's been in Wales through a very difficult position over the past year. We had a divisive leadership contest. We had a whole series of internal rows over the selection of our candidates. And to come back into the situation in mid-term of a, of a Labour government and to hold our position the, one of the best results for the Labour nationally across Britain this century for a government to actually hold its position and in some cases make some advances. Mark Phillips from Plaid Cymru, welcome back to you. I don't know what you found out outside the studio, but Isloin was good news for you. Any more good news? Oh, I told you I was going to enjoy today, and, the, and there's, a lot, there's a lot more good news yet to come. But I, but I think what's clear is that, I mean, we're registering votes of, of 29, 30% in places where we'd normally lose a deposit. But are you going to win the, seats? Oh, we certainly are. The, the, there are a number of seats to come yet where we are very hopeful uh, of, of further, of further gains. Oh, keep your eye on Llanelli. Keep your eye on, on the Ronda. Uh, the, some, some, some very interesting games going on there. Right. But I, I think it's important as well that we put to bed this idea that this, somehow this is a protest vote. Yes, there is a certain amount of disaffected uh, Labour support which is, which is coming Plaid's way. But what we've been finding throughout this election is the degree to which people re view Plaid Cymru in a different context in a Welsh elex election. Right, we've we'll hear more of that later. Roger Evans, you did tell us to keep an eye on Monmouth. We did. You're the former Member of Parliament. It's back in Tory hands. Some good news for you. Uh, yes, what has happened today quite clearly is this. Uh, Conservatives in Wales did not wish the Welsh Assembly. Uh, New Labour brought it upon themselves. They didn't have to have it, except it was their election promise, and they've carried it out. They miscalculated the referendum. They're miscalculated today, a very low turnout. Uh, old Labour, in the form of Roger Morgan, looks as though he's done extremely well. Uh, New Labour has just been turning off old Labour voters, certainly turning off Conservatives. Uh, old Labour voters, many have stayed at home. Uh, some have voted for Plaid Cymru. But the pattern we see is a massive vote 
of lack of confidence in new Labour. This has been a self-inflicted catastrophe for them. They've miscalculated. No rational politicians in their position I, I would ever have done this. I don't know what planet he's on this tour. Well, I, it's <laughs> certainly not the You're same on one on as the, the rest of us. You're on the South African one, while, Mr. Anyway. Lembert, okay, okay, just briefly, are you still, you look buoyant, although I have no idea why, I have to admit. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy even when the cameras aren't on me, and that's because of the figures. I told you earlier on that the signs were looking good about a growth in the Liberal Democrat vote, and I really have to emphasise this is perhaps the most understated achievement in the results so far. Uh, Plaid are clearly doing well, but look how the Liberal Democrat vote has grown in Swansea East, up 10%; in Cardiff Central, on the list road, up 10%; in uh, Cardiff West. We've gone up 11%. Now, those are tremendous increases in our vote in what is clearly a, a very competitive election, and that's why I'm still smiling. It's competitive, but a low turnout. So what do we make of that? I mean, it's very, very depressing, isn't it, as far as the credibility of the Assembly goes? Yes, the, the turnout is low, and it's actually lower than I would have expected. I think that's a very serious concern. Is it lower than you'd expected, Peter Hayne? No, not always. In some places it is. The problem is it was the same day as the council elections, and the turnout in council elections has been low traditionally. And the other thing is that a lot of Labour voters simply stayed at home. Now, that has happened right across Britain, but I would say this about the Welsh turnout, it's a lot bigger than the English turnout in the local elections there. Well, so it should be, surely. Well, indeed. Mark Phillips, yes. if you weren't going to get people out today, you never were, were you? Oh, we've worked very hard on getting people out and clearly it's paid dividends. We're, we're, we're seeing results where we're leapfrogging the, uh, the, the, the Liberal Democrats um, and, and we're very happy to be in that position. Uh, what's clear is that the, the, the context of this election is different. Uh, Plaid Cymru have never aspired to put a tenant in number 10 Downing Street so that I in any general election we are, we are marginalised by that very fact. In the context of a Welsh election, people are seeing Plaid Cymru in a new light and seeing the relevance of the policies that we're putting forward. And the battling on independence doesn't seem to have harmed you as much as many might have expected. It was a total red herring from day one. It did you quite a bit of harm at the time, though, didn't it? You had to come out fighting quite a few times. It, 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 it guided the discussion for a few days. Uh, but but the, the reality is this election was about how Wales is governed within the confines and the, and the constraints of, of the Assembly that exists. I think that's an also, this is a watershed for local Labour government politics. We have got now really to start campaigning properly, to open our uh, parties out much more, especially in our heartlands, to reach out to people, to work hard with them, because otherwise we'll be punished at the polls in the future. Right here, we're now reaching out and back to you. Betson, thanks very much indeed. The result in from Newport West just a few seconds ago, it went across the screen. Let me give you the figures. Here it is. Uh, a decent win for Labour, just under 5,000 majority and a turnout of 43%. Again, not quite as bad as uh, some of them have been. Labour on 11,500 votes. The Tories in second place. And um, we're just uh, looking at the result there, which, um, which is a uh, Plaid Cymru vote in third place. And looking at the actual uh, share there is 47.6% uh, for Labour, the Tories on 28.2% and the change 13% down uh, on, uh, on the 97 result there in Newport West. So uh, that's Paul Flynn's seat of course who's the um, radical, um, some would say maverick Labour MP at Westminster. Uh, that's the result uh, there. Now I think at this stage um, before we, um, we actually pay a visit to Westminster and uh, see who Diana medill has got with her, um, uh, with her panel up there for a a rather more metropolitan viewpoint, as some would say. Um, I should say that we're hoping for a word with John Manell, who's our reporter in uh, Llanelli. That's the count where um, Carmarthen East and Denevor is being counted. That's one of the seats we're looking at because it's the seat which will impact on um, Alan Michael, who's uh, ob obviously hoping to be first secretary in the Welsh Assembly. John, I hope, is with us. John, uh, what can you tell us at this stage about timings? Well, here we've got a touch of drama here. Uh, we should have by now had the regional count, that's the PR element for the Carmarthen East and Denevor seat, but there's a problem. I understand that uh, some stray papers have been found in a pile they shouldn't have been in, and as a result there's been considerable concern. I think you can see the uh, returning officer there um, uh, by the microphone, I think he's just made, about to make an announcement, but there's a recount on a section of the vote at the moment, Hugh. Um, so, any idea at all as to how long the delay might be? Can you give us any guidance? No idea at all at the moment. I understand the uh, Netley. Shall we see what Brad Rock Roynan has to say here? Let's Oversee just have a quick listen then. The uh, way in which the ballot papers are put into the, into the boxes of a thousand. 
OK, well, um, we'll, they, they we'll let them get on with their though. technicalities, I think, is the best way to put it. And uh, let you know I, that um, we will be back in Llanelli for that result um, whenever it comes, clearly. Yeah. And uh, they've had a few problems there. So that's a result we're very, very interested in. So it's a pity it's not ready yet. But um, we hope to get it at least um, in the next half hour. The president applied Cymru, we saw earlier on, David Wigley, having won a handsome victory in um, Carnarvon. And uh, Mr Wigley, well done. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, I suppose uh, the churlish, Mr Wigley, of course I'm not a churlish one, but churlish would say uh, it's hardly a feat for you to do well in that part of the world. It's where you always do well. The test is elsewhere for you. Well, yes, of course, uh, that is true to a very large extent. Uh, we're grateful for the support that we've had here. In fact, I've had the highest proportion of the vote that I've ever had and pushed the vote up from the general election. So that is a matter of uh, great satisfaction. I'm grateful for it. But uh, as you say, the interesting thing is to the extent to which Plaid Cymru is gaining ground in every part of Wales. This is a landmark election for Plaid Cymru. We are opening a new political chapter in the history of Wales, and Plaid Cymru is taking the lead at this crucial time. We've heard a lot over the years, Mr Wigley, from you and some of your predecessors about the big breakthrough, and certainly the big breakthrough in what were the industrial valleys in some areas of South Wales. Are you telling us today um, that this is the breakthrough that you've been talking about for at least 30 years? Well, it appears to be so. We've uh, heard the result from Isloin, and we know that there are very encouraging results coming from other parts as well. And uh, Plaid Cymru has succeeded in uh, forcing the agenda forward in this election. I think people have warmed to us as we have tried to attack the problems. We've suffered attacks from all the other parties, which I think was bad tactics on their behalf. And uh, people have warmed to us because quite clearly we are addressing the needs of Wales. And we hope that within the Assembly, in cooperation with others of goodwill of other parties, that we can work together to improve life in Wales. Um, in terms of your projections, Mr Wigley, given that the figures are still coming in, but obviously some of your performances are stronger than you'd anticipated, um, can you now at least give us your private view, your hunch, if you like, of where you might end up realistically at the end of the day? Well, we started the, uh, the day, and indeed uh, the election yesterday, expecting to be something between 15 and 20 seats. I still think it's probably going to be in that bracket, because as we win individual seats, we may lose seats off the uh, regional lists. So we have to see the overall results before we can be certain. But what, what is definite is that Applied Cymru is the main opposition party. It looks as, as if Labour will not have overall control, and therefore we will have to work together for the good of Wales. I'm sure we'll be talking again, Mr Wigley. Well done, and thank you very much. Now, um, I was talking to you earlier on about uh, the fact that uh, we're not just uh, reporting Welsh elections uh, on this programme, clearly not. And there's been hours of broadcasting from Scotland uh, last night and overnight to cover the historic vote there. And the fact that uh, Labour is looking at, we think, um, a form of coalition with the Liberal Democrats in order to govern in Scotland. And there are, of course, the tens the 10,000 council seats that were up for grabs uh, in England yesterday, just in England alone, a very big test of public opinion. Plenty for Diana Medill uh, at Westminster and her guests to talk about. So, Diana, it's over to you. Good morning, Hugh. Three key figures here at Westminster who join us now. We've got Hilary Armstrong for Labour, we've got Francis Maud for the Tories, and we've also got Nick Harvey from the Liberal Democrats. But Hilary Armstrong, with these low turnouts, and they are very disappointing, and with Peter Hayne in Wales talking about perhaps no overall majority for Labour in Wales, and the prospect of maybe a coalition in Scotland, this isn't a game plan that Labour had in mind, is it? This, this is a, a totally new approach to democratic representation in Scotland and Wales, but in England too, we've had the local elections and the turnout has been very poor. I think all of us, all political parties, need to be concerned about that. And certainly as far as the council elections in England are concerned, the government is determined to change things in local government so local councils really connect with local people. And local people feel those councils are about their lives, about their families' lives and the quality of life that they have. Well, maybe they people are. want We've less got... local government and more central government. Well, um, you know, if we go on getting low and low turnouts, that's what will uh, happen. But I don't think that is the good thing. I actually do believe in, the, in a really strong democracy. Uh, and that's what we want to work to uh, get to. I think it is interesting that we have been told over the years that uh, PR was the answer to turnout. Clearly it isn't. It is much more to do with people really feeling that the thing they're voting for, the organisation they're voting for, is going to be really important to their lives. That clearly hasn't come across in local government 
or I might say in Wales yet. Francis Maud, why do you think the Nationalist parties are doing particularly well? Well, I think they uh, have a natural advantage in a devolved um, scenario when there is elections for a Scottish Parliament or Welsh National Assembly. It's a, it's a pretty obvious thing to uh, look at the Welsh National and the Scottish National Party. And that takes away from a Tory comeback, doesn't it? Well, if I mean, we started, from a, an, we started from an incredibly difficult position with no parliamentary Westminster seats in either Wales or Scotland. I'm delighted we've won one in Wales against everyone's prognostication. So that's a real plus. That's very, but very what buoyant. would you classify as a comeback, do you think, for the oh, Tories net, in Wales and Scotland? Net, net gains, which we're obviously having. We're, you and know, preferably we are now, first past the post. We are now, you know, seriously ahead of where we were at the election, which was nowhere. I mean, we were absolutely nowhere. We had no representation in Westminster from Scotland and Wales at all. We now have elected representatives in Scotland and Wales. And against that in England, we also have a, a very considerable, I mean, what looks like being a net gain in council seats. I mean, right up at the top of people's expectations. Uh, I mean, uh, no. so that's, uh, that's very positive. Well, you know, the analysis that was done by the BBC's uh, researcher, and now works for Tony Blair, his personal advisor, mm -hmm. said that gains at this level uh, suggested that Labour was beginning to lose the plot and uh, these was marked recovery for the Conservatives. Mm. So I'll, I'm happy to take his word for it. Well, I mean, it may be fantasy, but it's, uh, fantasy it's Tony Blair's personal advisor's fantasy. Bill Bush fantasy. has said, it's, it, actually, but never mind. Uh, well, that's what Nick he said, Harry, just, <laughs> To bring in the Liberal Democrats, what are the preconditions for coalition either in Wales or in Scotland? Well, it's certainly not for me as an English MP to suggest uh, what my colleagues in Scotland or Wales will have oh, as preconditions. Oh, but you're used to cooperating with the Labour Party, aren't you, at a Westminster level? The you whole, know what works, uh, where, the, where their vulnerable points are, don't you? Uh, the whole purpose of devolution is that the power is devolved to Scotland and Wales and decisions are made there. And uh, in the Liberal Democrats, we practice what we preach. We are a devolved party. And it's absolutely out of the question that anyone from London, be it Paddy Ashdown as party leader, the chief whip at Westminster, me as the campaign chairman, or anyone else, would interfere in the negotiations that may have to take place, which our colleagues in Scotland and Wales are more than capable of doing for themselves. And those coalitions could involve any of the parties you talked to? The uh, Scottish colleagues made it clear from the outset that uh, in the first instance, they would talk to whichever of of the parties the electorates have decided should have the most seats. It looks as if that will be Labour. Um, in, in Wales, we'll have to wait again to see the arithmetic before anyone can judge what will happen. And what would you account the low turnout for when you are a party that very much wants representation on a local level? But people don't seem to be interested at all, are they? I think the principal thing, in both in last year's local elections, which had a very low turnout, and in all the elections yesterday, is simply that there isn't a, a wicked Tory government there to go out and vote against anymore. And uh, in the fullness of time, as dissatisfaction sets in with the Labour government, there'll probably be higher turnouts in local elections again. Thank you all very much indeed, Nick Harvey, Francis Maud and Hilary Armstrong. And you again. Diana, thank you very much indeed uh, at Westminster. Let me whiz through a few more results for you. Um, one of the infernal lists, uh, let me show you Keredigion, which has just come in, and uh, that shows Plaid Cymru with a massive 53% of that vote. And uh, again, health warnings, these do not mean automatically that uh, this is how the list result will turn out. These are all put into a big pot and shared out at the end of the day, and uh, it may actually turn out slightly differently. So, so bear with us, and uh, you can see that the change in terms of the 97 result on this list version, that's vote number two, is that Plaid Cymru are up by 12% in an area where they're already doing well, and Labour down by 9%. Let's move on to Montgomeryshire. Again, the list in Montgomeryshire, vote number two, the Lib Dems, a very strong area for them. This is Alex Carlyle's old seat, Lembit Opix seat at the moment, and uh, he's with us today. 35% uh, of the vote on this uh, list seat, and the Tories in uh, second uh, place, and uh, Plaid Cymru in third. And clearly, um, this is part of um, the vast Mid and West Wales uh, region, and this has implications, obviously, for uh, Alan Michael, um, who is hoping for election on the list in this area. The percentage change, if I can show that to you, is the Lib Dems in this strong area for them are down slightly on 10%. Um, Plaid Cymru doing pretty well. And um, Mid and West Wales, now so far, where are we? Well, um, we're now two out of eight results, if I'm reading this correctly, and Plaid Cymru on 41%, the Lib Dems on 21 Tories on 16 and Labour on 15 Early days on this result, so please don't get too excited at this stage. Um, Plaid Cymru up by 15% and um, the rest showing modest losses and a quick upsum for you. This is where we are at this stage. 
Um, Labour on 13 seats, 13 on first past the post, none yet on the lists. Uh, Plaid Cymru on two, two on first past the post, none yet on the lists. And the Conservatives on one, that's Monmouth, and uh, none on the lists as yet. 31, the finishing line for Labour if they're to have a majority. Now, let me tell you something. This is just a, a word of warning in terms of... Um, putting too much uh, weight on what we say um, at this stage of the game because it's very, very tight in terms of a race. But um, we think there's a decent chance, according to our own figures here, that Labour will not actually have enough to have a majority in the Welsh Assembly. Now, if that is the case and if that is borne out, that would indeed be a huge surprise. Uh, Labour were expected to get at least a working majority in the Welsh Assembly, maybe not in the Scottish Parliament, um, where we were expecting them to have to work with the Lib Dems, but in Wales they were expected to get a majority where they could govern alone. We are suggesting um, tentatively and carefully at this stage, based on these results, that uh, it's looking possible, if not maybe probable, that Labour will not have that majority it needs. Glyn, is that a fair summary? I think indeed it is now increasingly unlikely that Labour will get uh, an, uh, an overall majority. We had expected Labour to, to achieve that simply because Plaid Cymru, who were the main challengers at this election, were coming from such a low base that they couldn't really take key seats from Labour. But what we've seen this morning is that they've defied that prediction. They have taken some key seats. They've taken Isloin, and now they're up probably to take Carmarthen East. And what is more, they're up possibly to take one or two more. They're even in with a chance, apparently, of taking Llanelli. Llanelli, which had, at 1997 general election, a Labour majority of more than 16,000. And Plaid Cymru could, perhaps, Perhaps take that as well. Either way, they could do well enough to stop Labour getting that overall majority. Well, I'm pleased to say we've been joined by Laura McAllister, who's a political scientist. Laura, how do you read this trend at the moment? Well, it's a very interesting one, and Plaid Cymru, Cymru is clearly doing much better than even it expected. Um, as Glyn has already said, actually extending its base from beyond its traditional heartlands to the South Wales Valleys is a very, very significant factor, and one which will probably reverberate throughout Welsh politics. Why has it happened now? I think it's happened now well within this context of it being a Welsh general election. The trends are in other European countries when elections are held at a so-called regional level that the parties which are best identified at that level do best in the elections. And Plaid Cymru of course is a distinctively Welsh party and has a, its own Welsh policies which are clearly known by the electorate. So, so um, not that we want to get tempted into overstatement, but um, it's obviously historic in the sense that it's the first assembly and it's the first measure of self-government for many centuries. But is it also historic then um, in the sense that we can say this is the big breakthrough that Plaid Cymru have been talking about, or should we not get too excited about that at this stage? Let's be cautious. This, these are the first elections to the new institution, and Plaid Cymru has got to prove itself in the new institution over the next four years. If it does well, then it certainly will establish itself as a credible challenger to, to Labour, if Labour gets that majority, and of course that's by no means clear at this stage. But Plaid Cymru is going to have to take on a new responsibility now as a large party, the largest opposition party in the new institution, and it must behave in that sense, which it probably hasn't had the opportunity to do in other institutions as yet. OK, Laura, thanks very much indeed. A few more results before I go back to the panel. Um, just to give you Gower, which is down there, a very nice part of the world, uh, just to the west of Swansea. Um, uh, Edwina Hart for Labour taking that seat with a majority of just over 3,000, a turnout of 47%, which is slightly higher than some of the ones we've seen recently. That's, uh, that equates to a share of 35.4% for Labour, 24% for Plaid Cymru, which again is a strong showing, and uh, they've gained 19% on their um, performance in the 97 election in this Labour seat, by the way. Now then, Cardiff South and Penarth, this is Alan Michael's Westminster constituency, which of course he was too late to pick up on this first past the post. Had he been there, it's fairly safe to say that he would have been uh, elected. Uh, Lorraine Barrett certainly has been, with a majority of nearly 7,000, a very low turnout of 38% in the area represented by Labour's leader in Wales. That should tell you something at least. And the, um, the share of the vote, 48% for Labour, 191713 for the Conservatives plied. And the Lib Dems, the difference on 97 on Alan Michael's performance in the Westminster Parliament election um, plied up by nearly 14%. Alan Michael's vote down by 5% uh, or more. Um, Torvine, this is the area represented by Paul Murphy, the Northern Ireland Minister, been won by uh, Lynn Neagle for Labour, 9,000 there, a majority of 5,285. Um, over independent Labour. Now the turnout there, a very low 39%. Share of the vote for Labour, hefty 38%, but again, it's a low poll, so the health warnings on this one, and uh, it's, um, it's a 
bit of a dip for Labour in terms of Paul Murphy's own performance last time. A quick round-up for you now then before the panel. Labour now 15, Plaid Cymru on 2, the Conservatives on 1. No list results yet, those are the zeros at the bottom. All the results you can see, 15, 2 and 1, are from first past the post. And uh, Labour are looking for 31, we are suggesting at the moment they won't get there. We shall see. Betsan and the panel, over to you next. Thank you, Hugh. I can tell you that Peter Haynes' face is inscrutable, hasn't given anything away yet. But by the amount of note passing going on here, I think you're really starting to strike your deals. Has it got to that? No, it hasn't at all. I think there are a number of messages from this. I do think that it's going to be very difficult for us to achieve a clear majority. I don't think that that's very likely on the trends at the present time. But the trends have changed overnight. And those areas where we've had unpopular local councils, we've done badly in our valley seats and so on. And I think there's some more, probably some more bad news for us in the valley areas. Those areas where we've had a much more a popular councils, we've actually done well. So uh, if the overall majority has gone, what does that mean? Well, it means that the electoral system, which we designed very generously for Wales, which gave representation to the minority parties in Wales compared with Labour, has meant that it's very difficult for us to get a clear majority. And therefore, we'll operate a new kind of politics in Wales, which has always been what devolution's about, working with those who wish to work with us, and both the Liberals and Plaid have, have virtually signalled that. I don't know where the Tories are in all of this. They have got a dreadful performance. They keep picking and, on you, uh, don't they, Roger Well, Evans. because their performance has been terrible, and they will never come back in Wales in the general election. Right, let's hear from the, the so-called minority parties then. Mark Phillips, has to be you first. What are you looking for if things go on as they've been going so far today? Oh, to get rid of this label of a minority party, I think. Um, we clearly are doing exceptionally well today. Uh, we'll be looking to talk with the, um, the leaders of the Labour group, whoever they may be, uh, in, 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 in the Assembly. Ready? We won't have demands, but we'll be talking about issues of policy. We're not looking for formal pacts, we're not looking for, for, for uh, marriages or, or, or coalitions, but clearly we can develop understandings about priorities of policy, which are common. Uh, right, where to, does to this leave you two? Let me, talk, let me come to you first. Well, you were glad to see Montgomeryshire safe, by the yes, way. Yes, uh, well, that's the, remember, that's the list votes, but uh, it looks pretty likely we'll hold Montgomeryshire for the seat as well. Uh, it leaves me feeling pretty positive. Um, bear in mind, it was an agreement between Ron Davis when he was Shadow Secretary of State for Wales and my predecessor Alex Carlyle had established in writing some of the terms of proportional representation. And the consequence of this process is that we are possibly all minority parties, including the Labour Party, if they don't get a majority. And that forces a new kind of perhaps more positive politics. And I think that if that happens, the Liberal Democrats will have a very important part to play in the Welsh, first to Welsh Assembly. Will the Conservatives join in the party then, Mr Evans? Not the kind of party to frustrate the obvious will of the Welsh people. Here is Peter Haynes celebrating the fact that instead of being the dominant party in Wales, he seems to have set up an electoral system to ensure minority parties each side of him to have a say. Well, now, you the effect... are grateful for that, though. It's no, not, back not in, in, in Wales, isn't it? The politicians are grateful, but what about the people of Wales? You vote for any of these gentlemen's parties, and what policies emerge? But you've done worse what, what, than ever before, what Roger. Deal, the Tories have done worse what than deal, ever before. What deal, Peter, are you going to strike, is the question we now. Are going... Not what the voters decided. You have devised a system, Peter, to take the decisions away from the people of Wales and to give them to this nice little cosy party afterwards when you decide how much you're going to have to give way for Liberal support or is it possibly going to be a bit of cooperation from the Nationalists? That Are you isn't saying that democratic. you expected this kind of result? Because clearly nobody else expected to be Of course we did. Close. One of the effects of proportional representation <laughs> is to unleash regionalism, vested interests and differences in particular areas. It's not at all surprising that if Peter Haynes' party hypes the National Assembly and the National General Election for Wales, the Nationalists turn out in large numbers to vote for their people. That is why you have got substantial gains by Plaid Cymru in parts of Wales. And the other factor is Peter Haynes' party is obviously deeply unpopular. But Peter Haynes, one other thing our poll did show was that people preferred the idea of not a literal coalition, maybe, but of not having overall majority. And they've gone out and they've voted according to those tactics, haven't they? Or not. They? The electoral system makes that more likely. And I think we will now see a new democratic participatory politics in Wales through the National Assembly, in which we will not have the kind of Yabu stuff we've just heard from Roger. The Tories are living in the last century in Wales. They're going to do worse and worse and worse. They're also going to become nowhere near winning the next general election on the strength of these results. But well, there let's will get be more, more inclusive results politics. in today, so we'll know if you're right or not. It's back to you, Hugh. 
I think uh, we can go to Swansea West, Bets. I'm sorry to curtail that. And uh, let's have the result from Swansea West now. I think it's coming up. And as we can see, they're getting ready on the uh, stage. Uh, the, um, the, no, no, there we are. They're stepping up to the platform now and to the microphone. And uh, we should get that result in a few moments. Cynulliad, Cenedlaethol Cymru, National Assembly, Abertawe, Gotlewyn, Swansea, Swansea West. West. Aroivi, Vivian Sugar, Sef Swyddog, Canliniadau, and Etholiad, uh, Ganhaliad. Just introducing herself as the uh, returning officer in now, now on this now. 6th of May. And has Bussi mm. drwy hyn fod nifer um, uh, plaid laesiau. Declaring that the number of votes cast was as follows. Dros bob un o'r ymgaesydd yn yr aetholiad uchod fel yn gannym. Davis, David Andrew, the Labour Party candidate, eight, sorry, oith mil dai in scythe. <laughs> Evans, David Charles, independent, now, now, chwech. Harris, John Richard, the People's Representative, Cynrychiolydd, a bobble, scythe, scythe, pedwar. Lloyd David Rees, Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, Chwech Mil Dai Now In. So that's just over 6,000, a 2,000 behind the Labour vote of 8,200. Newbury, John, Liberal Democrats Wales, Democratiaid, Reith Vradol Cymru, Tree Mil Pimp Pedwar Tree. That's 3,500 of them. Alec, United Socialists, Socialwyr Unedig, Dai Chwech Tree. Valerio Paul Harold, the Welsh Conservative Party, three mil chwech pedwar three. Three thousand six hundred and forty odd. So that means it's um, a narrow win, a relatively narrow Akaroibi win there for Andrew and Davis um, Andrew for Davis, the Labour Party. Ayatol and uh, and I think we'll find that that's now confirmed. That's Mr Davis there uh, gladly acknowledging his victory in Swansea West. Swansea West, the Westminster seat of the uh, Right Honourable Alan now Williams, who's a, a, a veteran Wales, Labour MP Swansea and is uh, a former Labour I've minister. So that's the story then in Swansea the West. And uh, I just want to bring you a few other results that we've had coming in. A very interesting result in the Vale of Glamorgan, scene of a famous by-election some 10 years ago. Labour just squeaked home in the Vale of Glamorgan. Jane had 11,500 votes, uh, barely 1,000 ahead of David Melding for the Tories. A turnout of 48% there. Share of the vote, 35-32. Two, Labour Conservative, a 24% of apply Cymru, which is again quite significant in this area for them. Labour down 19 on the result got by John Smith, the Labour MP, for this seat at the last election. The Tories almost at uh, level pegging with their result last time. I'll quickly withdraw a few others for you. The solid Labour seat of Ogmore, Janice Gregory, has uh, kept that for Labour. And the interesting thing is that Plaid Cymru took 28% of the vote. And um, we can see that that is up by 21% of the uh, vote last time. Just to confirm the Swansea one we've just seen, and Andrew Davis's victory on a turnout of uh, 40%, um, taking 34.5% of the vote, um, which is a 22% a, a discount, if you like, on, uh, on Alan Williams's performance in Swansea West last time. A final scorecard for you, Labour now 18, Plaid Cymru still on two, the Conservatives still on one, can Labour make 31? We are saying probably not. We might be proved wrong, but it's certainly exciting and it's certainly finely balanced. Now I want to go straight to Llangevny on Anglesey to talk to Yayan Wynne-Jones, who's uh, Plaid Cymru's campaign supremo. Uh, Mr Jones, uh, good, m good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Hugh. And how's it looking for you there? Well, we, they've only started counting the constituency results here, uh, but we've already seen a significant pattern because on the regionalist vote we did extremely well. And uh, how are you extrapolating this trend? What is it going to look like for Plaid Cymru at the end of today? Well, we don't know because it's a shifting pattern. We had estimated, and I presented my final reports to the party uh, last weekend, which indicated that our share of the vote would be fairly similar to the exit poll, in fact, within a half a percent. But we're certainly exceeding that quite substantially. And I've just seen the result from one of the Swansea seats, which was unexpected but very welcome and it does look now as though Plaid Cymru has come of age in this election people have realized that we've extended our, our appeal 
all over Wales. We're picking up support in areas that we hadn't dreamed, dreamt of two years ago. And I'm very proud indeed of the campaign that we fought. And we're looking forward to playing a very constructive role with a very significant team of members in the Assembly. You've come of age, you see, Mr Jones, on, on the coattails, some would say, of a very, very, very low turnout in many parts of Wales. Even the best turnouts are not as good as in a general election, and this is meant to be a Welsh version of a general election. So should you not get too overexcited at this stage about this breakthrough? Well, look, let, let us make it clear that uh, in those seats where we've had the highest turnout, Clyde has been scoring extremely well. And even in those seats where there isn't a high turnout, we've been st scoring extremely well. Now, clearly, we would have liked to have seen a higher turnout. No question about that. But what is clear is that the people of Wales are now seeing Plaid Cymru as the only party that can challenge Labour for ascendancy in the Assembly. But what we want to make sure is that when the new team of Assembly members from Plaid goes there, that we want to play a constructive role. We want to make this Assembly work. And the kind of politics which the referendum dawned in Wales is something we want to be part of. So, um, just to make it absolutely straight, Mr Jones, you're looking at, if the projections are right and Labour just fail to make an overall majority in the Welsh Assembly, you are ready and willing today to cooperate and make things run smoothly with them? We are indeed. I don't think there's any question of us entering into a form of coalition or anything like that. It looks as though that would be highly, highly unlikely. But I think what we are saying is this, that we want to make this Assembly work, we will cooperate with anybody that's necessary to make that work. And if Labour is the largest party, well, obviously, we do it with them. But we want to make it clear the first task of every member of the Assembly, whatever the party, is to make this institution work. Because we need to make it something that everybody in Wales can feel proud of. We feel proud today and we want everybody to share with, our, with us uh, in this great exercise. Mr Jones, good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Diolch. Um, now, we've heard a lot about Alan Michael this morning. We haven't seen him, of course, yet, um, which is a, a pity. But um, he is, of course, the Secretary of State for Wales, and he's hoping for a seat in the Assembly, standing in uh, West Wales, in the seat of Carmarthen East. Uh, not, not in the seat, in the actual area of Mid and West, in the big region then, hoping for a list, uh, a list seat, as we call them, which is all rather complicated. But basically, it means that if Labour don't do very well on the first vote, um, he's hoping that Labour will be compensated on the list system, which means that he will actually then get elected. All a bit involved, but that's basically the picture. Let's go over to Haverford West, where they're counting. Penny Roberts is there. Penny, um, first of all, any sign of Alan Michael? And secondly, any word on what his uh, prospects are? Well, first of all, Hugh, uh, no sign of Alan Michael. We were expecting him at about half past 11. There were dozens of photographers and cameramen outside waiting for his arrival. He didn't turn up. Uh, we're now told that he's going to be coming here much closer to the declaration, which could be around half past two. Maybe that's some indication of the way things uh, are going for him here. We've had a couple of the list uh, results from the eight constituencies that make up Mid and West Wales. Not looking great for Labour. In Ceredigion, they came second, 4,000 votes. Montgomeryshire, four, 3,000 votes. You can see behind me the, uh, the peach uh, ballot papers there. They're about to do list uh, votes for uh, Priscilla Pembrokeshire and Carmarthen West. What seems to be happening here, that Plaid Cymru have got their voters out. Uh, Labour uh, haven't uh, in, in the numbers that they would have liked. And I've been speaking to the Conservative uh, party workers here and, and they're telling me that Conservative voters who voted no in the referendum just haven't bothered to vote at all. Okay, thanks very much Penny. Um, I think we're in a position now to um, have a, a little more explanation, I suppose, um, from Peter Snow um, on our projection, um, given that we've been um, talking about Labour perhaps not reaching a majority. Peter, could you give us a little more detail on that? Yes, we have our first solid forecast of the night, Hugh. Knife edge for Alan Michael, we've heard in, uh, in Midden West Wales. Knife edge for Labour, as we've known all night, uh, in Wales' new National Assembly. I can take you a trip across Cardiff Bay and into the spectacular new building that uh, Richard Rogers, the designer of Leadium Dome, is, is going to build there. We're going to go into the chamber, the circular chamber, where all the empty seats are waiting around. Of course, they won't be there for two years, but never mind it futuristic vision of what it'll be like a couple of years from now. They, of course, meet uh, only in July. They'll meet just across the road there in the house behind. Never mind. Here is what the new National Assembly for Wales, we think now, definitely is going to look like. Labour, under Alan Michael, who we think will be elected in Mid and West Wales. 29 seats for Labour. Liberal Democrats, under Michael German, six Liberal Democrats in the National Assembly for Wales. 
the Tories, Rod Richards, nine Tories in the National Assembly for Wales, and Plaid Cymru, doing very well indeed in terms of share of the vote. 16 members under David Wigley uh, in the National Assembly for Wales. Let's just take a bird's eye view now of this uh, circle of new members of the Welsh Assembly, the Assembly members, 60 altogether, 31 would be the winning post, Labour on 29. Short of the winning post, really definitely short of the winning post. They will not have overall control if our forecast is anywhere near right, and we think it pretty well is. They will need the support, either the tacit or the formal support, of the Liberal Democrats sitting up there, the, or in the gold ones up there, if they are to have control of this assembly. With the Conservatives on nine, no others, and Plaid Cymru over here on 16. Hugh. Peter, um, intriguing stuff. So uh, I think uh, it might be an idea to put some of that to... Um, one of the prominent Labour politicians will certainly be in the Assembly. Uh, if we go over to, um, to Cardiff West, and um, I think Rodri Morgan, who is actually going to be at the Assembly, certainly with his big majority in Cardiff West. Um, Rodri Morgan joins us now. Uh, Mr Morgan, um, it looks as if you're going to be short of a majority. Um, how disappointing is that? Very disappointing indeed. Not that I bet on it, but I did actually think genuinely that we'd have a clear majority of six or eight. And I think now, based on the results that we've heard so far, we'll be struggling. And I think it's going to be right on a knife edge. Um, what does that mean in terms of the um, prospects for smooth working relationships, do you think? Are you, are you well, concerned about that or do yeah, you think no, that no, that will no, work no, out? No, it'll work out. I mean, uh, everybody that is elected will be very conscious of the need to do a good job for Wales and to use the Assembly to its full potential. And, uh, you know, Scotland's going to be in the same boat as us, although it was more expected perhaps in Scotland. And, uh, you know, we, we have got to make it work. Uh, that is the key thing, because people will be very conscious of the need not to play silly games in the Assembly. They'll say, OK, you know, I mean, let us not now try to knock uh, spots off each other. If one party does not have an overall majority, we've got to find a different way of working from that which we had expected. Um, now, maybe w Labour will scrape it. We don't know. There are funny things happening. Yeah. We are doing better in the seats where it's not a traditional Labour vote, but a new Labour vote. We are doing bad in where it, where it is a traditional Labour vote. Why so is that? The, Why do you think that is? Well, it's happened before. I mean, you, you know, that, that in the late 60s we lost control of Merthyr, in the late 70s we lost control of, um, uh, of um, uh, Caerphilly and of Isloin, which we've lost again now at parliamentary level. When there's a Labour government in London, for the past 30 years, uh, the Labour voters of the Valleys have tended to vote Plaid Cymru. It's a dustbin for disaffected Labour votes during periods when there's a Labour government and they don't think Labour is quote, doing enough, unquote, in the valleys. Um, the statements about Objective 1 and the prospects for it for next year have not come early enough, and the improvements in the arrangement for pneum pneumoconiosis payments for minors, they haven't come early enough, um, and the minimum wage, perhaps, if that had come in, you know, it couldn't do, I know, but, I mean, if it had come in a couple yeah. of months before, or these elections had been a couple of months later, I think the picture would have been very different. But we haven't delivered what you might call enough of the agenda for the traditional Labour voter early enough for them to appreciate it and to say, OK, Labour is bringing home the bacon for people like us, therefore we will go out and vote Labour. But it's happened in the late 60s under Harold Wilson. It happened in the late 70s under Wilson and Callaghan, exactly the same pattern. Well, Roger Morgan, we shall see how it pans out. Um, as you say, um, we don't know the final result yet, no, but uh, that's the way it seems to be going. Thank you very much for sparing some time to talk to us. Thank okay, you. thanks. Um, well, before we, um, we head towards the one o'clock news for viewers in England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. That's coming up very soon on BBC One. Viewers in Wales will be able to stay with this programme if they wish on BBC Wales on Two. That uh, junction, if you like, is coming up uh, fairly soon. Um, just before that, uh, Glenn, uh, at the moment we're looking at Labour basically doing, if we're going to be absolutely blunt about it, failing to make that mark. Failing to make that mark because uh, uh, Plaid Cymru have done so much better than expected. David Wigley said that they would stop Labour getting that overall majority. We didn't really believe him, I must say, but he does appear to have succeeded. We'll see. What actually matters is how many extra seats, constituency seats, can Plaid Cymru pick up. Uh, they are likely to pick up, I would say, on this performance, another one or two in mid and west Wales. And that, incidentally, is why Alan Michael will now probably be safe because Plaid Cymru will done, have done too well in the constituencies to pick up seats on the list. So Alan Michael will probably, personally, be the You're beneficiary right. of this Plaid Cymru performance. It's ironic. Um, Robin, a brief thought from you at the end of this uh, section. 
elections like these, all party leaders uh, claim to be going home from the party with a prize. Tony Blair's been saying in Downing Street that uh, this is proof that Labour's policies of devolution are working. vast majority of people in Scotland voted for parties opposed to the nationalist agenda of independence. Liberal Democrat leader Paddy Ashdown says it's proof that of protest. Uh, they're not a party of protest, uh, but have become a party of power. And William Haig has set off on a whistle-stop tour of areas where the Tories grab back control of councils. They're up by one, over 1,100 and says they've started on the long road to electoral recovery. Robin O'Clean and Glimmathais, thank you very much indeed. Um, let's uh, just have a quick look at the scorecard then before we leave you, um, because it's uh, Labour on 20, Plaid Cymru on 2, the Conservatives on 1, Labour heading towards the 29 mark according to our projection, that's not the 31 they need for a majority. So for you viewers in um, England, Scotland and Northern Ireland, um, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you now and uh, viewers in Wales who want to stay with this programme can actually join us in a few moments in, on BBC Wales on 2. So I'll see you then and to the rest of you, goodbye.